look at the business that you're running and figure out what you're doing that you should not be doing. Follow yourself around, make a list of things that are repetitive in nature, that are easily taught, create a standard operating procedure document for it, or a video, hand it off to someone else, and then go do what you do. Do you want to earn more? Work less and enjoy what you do each day. It's no secret, it can be done. This podcast with Dr. T will not only educate and inspire you, it will also teach you how to do more and be more with the time you already have. It will be like a shot of adrenaline straight into the heart of your business. Here is your host, Tyson Franklin. Hi, I'm Tyson Franklin, and welcome to this week's episode of It's No Secret with Dr. T. Now, I have a person from Louisiana on the show today. Her name is Denise Griffiths, and she is known as the Nerd in Stilettos, which I think is an amazing description. And she's also the host of Your Partner in Success Radio, which is a podcast program I have been on twice, which is fantastic. So, Denise, how are you doing this morning? I am lovely, and I'm so glad that you invited me because here's the thing. I've done almost 400 podcasts. I'm almost never a guest. I don't know why that is. I don't know if people just think I'm too busy and I don't get invited or I don't know. I'm feeling kind of left out, so I'm so excited to be on your podcast. It's interesting to be on the other side of the microphone, so to speak. But I've often wondered if I appear unapproachable, and if that's the case, I'm going to have to do something about it. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe they think, well, you're too successful, you won't want to go on the show. I, if that's the case, I guess it's a good problem to have in a way, but I'm not too successful. I would love to be on other people's shows. So again, I'm really excited to be here with you. So today we were going to talk about a topic that, once again, it's something that I, I know of, but I know very little about, but I know you know a lot about it and it's virtual assistants and I know there's a lot of people in business and I know a few people who have multiple virtual assistants in different countries all around the place some are within their own country and I just thought it's an interesting topic that my show is aimed at helping people earn more work less and enjoy what they do more each day and I think maybe virtual assistants can sort of take some of that workload off of people oh there's no question listen just to give you a little bit of background i had always been a bit of an entrepreneur. I've either owned a brick and mortar business or, you know, I've done something online. In fact, when the first computers came out, there was no real internet. We didn't even have AOL. Remember that little did do dial up? We didn't even have oh, that you yet. Don't, I don't miss that. <laughs> I don't either. And I don't miss getting those stupid discs in the mail every week. We used to turn them into Christmas ornaments. They were so annoying. But but the thing is, I bought this computer. We were just talking online, you know, with somebody about this today. And my very first computer, I didn't buy one of the little Apple computers. I had the big Mama Jamma, the one with the MS DOS manuals. I think I still have one somewhere. And for the longest kind of time, and this is when I figured out that I was a nerd, I didn't even know it. <laughs> I spoke MS DOS. I mean, I could tell you what command you needed to get where you needed to be. And the truth is, Tyson, the thing was nothing more or less than a word processor and a file cabinet that was attached to electricity. It didn't really do anything, but I had to have it. So when the opportunity came later in life for me to just, it so, was during so what, the what year was that? What year did you get your first computer? Oh, gosh, it was before. He was in the 80s. Okay. I couldn't even tell you. It was in the. It was before 1985. I can tell you that. Wow. So okay. That is let's way just back. say 83. Oh, yeah. 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 So, you know, I went about my business, and I didn't know. I just knew that I was going to make a living with a computer. I didn't know how. There was no logical way for me to do it, but I just knew. You know, instinct told me I needed to pay attention. So later on, when the recession kind of hit, and it hit Louisiana very bad, it really did. In fact, there were signs all over the places that said, last person out of the state, close off the lights. I mean, people were just leaving. But what I, what I said is, you know, I went back to college. I went back to college at night. I was taking temporary jobs during the day. I was working two jobs during the day. I was exhausted, but I came out of it with a computer science degree. Yeah. And I still didn't know what I was going to do with it. What I did know is that I wasn't going to work in somebody else's shop ever. I'm... 
a committed introvert. I run with scissors. I do not play well with others. You do not want me in your office. That's <laughs> all I have to say about it. You want coffee? Get your butt up and go get it yourself. I'm not your girl. So eventually I started, you know, I, I took my little show on the road and I started building websites for $250. And we didn't have all the the wonderful toys that we have now. We didn't have graphical user interface. We didn't have any of the the really neat techie stuff that I just revel in. Yeah. But I kept doing it. I kept building websites. And as I was going and as I'm sure you can hear my cat, sorry. Yeah, no, I can hear. What's the name of that cat? <laughs> He has his own hashtag on Facebook and his name is Hamilton is an ass because he <laughs> is. <laughs> he's 17 pounds. He's two years old and that, the world is his. He's I a, just live to serve him. That's a big cat. But anyway, yeah, he's a big um, But, you know, as the internet came along and as social media came along and as everything started really popping into place, I it occurred to me that I was – working with my same clients. I have clients that I've had for 10 years. And to this day, all of my original clients from 10 years ago, maybe even before that, yeah. are still with me. Two, have, one has passed away, the other one retired and moved to Germany. So he's no longer a client, but I still have all of my original clients. And it occurred to me that I was actually consulting with them. I would say, listen, have you heard about this thing called Twitter? Have you heard about this thing called Facebook? Oh my gosh, we need to start talking about this. And I was always in touch with them. I was always making suggestions to better their websites or, you know, find a way to get the word out because social media was hugely important, you know, for how we connect now. Yeah. And it occurred to me, and that's a long winded way to say that it occurred to me, I was already doing what a highly competent virtual assistant would do anyways, consulting with my clients, finding technology, making it work, cobbling systems together, taking the burden off of them of saying, how do I make money? How do I make this all work? So I hung up my my shingle, so to speak, on Facebook and called myself a virtual assistant because I had seen it somewhere. That was my introduction to it and my business exploded. What, what, year, what year did you start as a virtual assistant? I want to say it was around 2004, 2005. Okay, so that, that's very early on in the whole Very virtual right. virtual world. Right. And nobody really knew what it was. And when my, my family, who not a one of them are entrepreneurs, they're all very hardworking people who have, you know, gotten really great jobs. They've stayed in the jobs. They've retired practically millionaires in one or two cases. Yeah. And they would say, what is it that you do? And I'd say, well, you know, I build websites. I'm a virtual assistant. I could not explain it. They couldn't understand it because it's a different world for us, isn't it? I mean, we're online all the time. So I finally just said, I build websites. And that was the end of that. They, they understood that. They understood that. that part. Right. And then, you know, as time progressed, I went from being what I would term a virtual assistant to being much more of an online business manager, meaning that, you know, I did, was doing the same things, but at a much higher level, you know, we're creating online businesses we're creating funnels we're helping you write your book we're helping you with book launches if you can think of it i can do it my team and i are very very good at helping people build their online businesses okay so you've gone from a virtual assistant to an online business manager which is very different a, a virtual assistant and there's a there's a good distinction there a virtual assistant is somebody, and you can hire them from anywhere. I know a lot of people yeah. will go to the Philippines, but a, a virtual assistant can do some tasks, repetitive tasks. Let's say that you've got something that you need to do multiple times a day. Yeah. You know, maybe it's just posting on, you know, something on a blog or, or whatever it is, posting on social media. These are time consuming activities. And let's face it, if you're working at a $500 level, which is an entrepreneur, you should be somewhere between, you know, billing out a hundred bucks to 500 bucks to much more an hour. And you're doing, let's call it $10 an hour work. It's not, you know, good virtual assistant in the United States will cost you probably about 35, $45 an hour. If you're doing that work, you're not doing your own work, are you? Yeah, you're tired, you're exhausted. You're spending a lot of time and energy on things that you really should outsource. As if, for instance, you know, I don't want to mow my own grass. I shouldn't have to mow my own grass. I hire people. Well, you're not going to you do know, it in stilettos anyway. 
<laughs> don't want to mow the grass and still let nah. us. Well, it'll and help with just... aeration, though. That'll help air the lawn. Yeah, if I don't fall on my face. But yeah. <laughs> it's hot here. It's very humid here. So, yeah, I don't want to be out there. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So look at it as saying, okay, I don't wash my own car. I don't do my own lawn. You know, there's a lot of things that people simply are willing to job out. Look at the business that you're running and figure out what you're doing that you should not be doing. Follow yourself around, make a list of things that are repetitive in nature, that are easily taught, create a standard operating procedure document for it, or a video, hand it off to someone else. That is and good advice. Then go do what you do. Because I, I've read that multiple times we have when they say you go through your business and go, what's a, what's a $10 hour job? What's a yeah fifty dollar an hour job, hundred dollar, a thousand dollar an hour job? And which jobs, when you look at your day, what are you, where are you spending your time? And should you have somebody else looking after that? Oh, exactly. And I will tell people, you know, when they call me and say, "Okay, how can you help me? What can we do?" I don't jump in and say, "Oh, we can do this and we can do that. And we can do." Us. I don't know until you tell me what you need done. So what I want you to do, I'll send you this document. It's an Excel spreadsheet. I want you to follow yourself around for about three or four days and figure out what the heck you're spending your time on and what is exhausting you and what is not paying you. And people are always 100% of the time, just they come back and go, I had no idea. I have been spending four to five hours a day on stuff that I should never touch. So you hire someone that can do that. But here's the thing, Tyson, and this is a big big mistake that that people make i'm ready because for like it. you <laughs> well they have never worked with it within a vir virtual assistant whether they're in a foreign country you know whether they're a ten dollar assistant or like me a hundred dollars an hour i yeah. promise you i am i'm worth it because <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna say i am but but the thing is whatever it is that you're going to be handing off to a virtual assistant you have to know what you're asking them to do, you have to be able to create that SOP document or whatever it is. You need to be able to say to them, okay, this is what I know needs to happen. Or, you know, can you do this? And yes, I'm going to test you after a while, about two, three weeks into it, we're going to circle back around and I'm going to find out if you really are able to do the work that I need you to do. The biggest mistake that entrepreneurs make with hiring a virtual assistant or an OBM is assuming that we can read your minds. We cannot. You can't. You're you not mind readers. No. We, and too many, too many, and this is why I kind of got out of the VA industry is because like anything else, like we were talking earlier on my podcast, it, things things happen. You know, a, a new kind of way of networking, connecting, working pops up and then everybody and their grandmother is all of a sudden a podcaster or they're yeah. a virtual assistant and it dilutes the pool of very good good people who are stellar at what they do so too many people kind of started coming into the industry and continue to come into the industry who have not properly trained they don't really know what they're doing and they make a mess and then leave it for me or somebody like me to clean up what i have found that is very consistent is that the frustrated business owner simply did not sit down and train with the VA. They handed them off a, a list, a task, you know, the little VA is sitting at her keyboard or they assume the VA is sitting at her keyboard just waiting for instruction and that's not how we operate. Yeah, We, we literally are your partner in success if we're doing our jobs properly. So say you were to come to me, Tyson, and say, okay, Denise, I need, I need a VA. This is what I need. This is what I think has to happen. We would sit down weekly for at least 30 to 60 minutes on a recorded call, hashing it all out. Okay. Where do you want to go with this? Let's, how about if I suggest you do this? How are you currently doing this? I would actually take a deep dive into your business and find out what the heck is going on. Yeah. And then say, okay, you know, we can help you with this. This is what I think you need to do. By the way, what you're doing over here is not serving you. Why don't you put that off to the side for right now? Any good virtual assistant or OBM worth her salt is actually going to consult with you. They're not going to be sitting waiting for you to say, hey, by the way, you know, go post something on Facebook. And that's a whole nother area. A good social media manager is not a VA. So that's that's another talk. But you okay. really... So that's a different thing altogether. So you got your, you got your virtual really assistant, is. you got your, your business... Yeah, the business um, manager, 
or you mm-hmm. call it the online business manager. Online business manager. And then your social media person. Completely that, different. Completely different right. again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Different, different training, different. I mean, I do it all, but it's completely different areas. And the thing is, let, let's take it because you're, you know, you had very successful brick and mortar businesses. Yeah. Would you, as a business owner, hire a receptionist or hire an office manager? Let's just say it's an office manager and say, hey, here you go. Here's your desk. There's a fax machine. Here's your brand new shiny red pin, whatever it is. Good luck. No. Would you hire like you can't virtual assistant? Same thing. You cannot hire like that. You cannot. You have to train them. You have to, you know, get to know them, make sure that everybody is on the same page, that they understand what your business is. They understand how they can really step up and help you. And once they're trained and once they have a very good idea, you need to let them rip. You shouldn't even have, if they're good, you shouldn't even have to send them instructions. They already know what to do and they're making suggestions on how they can better assist you. Okay, so to go back one step though, first you need to, document what you do throughout a day yes or throughout a, throughout a week or throughout a month and i mean and really document it what where are you spending your time i've heard people do this in like in 15 minute um like increments just record what they do eight hours a day 15 minute blocks and then when you look at all that see where you're wasting your time and then this is so you, you can get yeah an online business manager maybe do one part and a virtual assistant to do something and then you might have a social media manager that does something else at in other times or alternatively, you can hire somebody like me who is really we're more of an agency than anything. You know, I have a great team. I don't do all of this work myself ever. I mean, I can't. Yeah. I have a lot of clients. I have them all over the world. There's no way I could take care of all of that myself. So I built a really good team, web developers, copywriters. We can step in and do it all. Ah. So what I do is I find, and I'm always the face of the company, by the yeah. way, you never speak directly with any of my people. You just, you just don't. I'm the one, if you need to yell, I'm the one you yell at. I'm the one handing out directions because that's not your job. Your job is to get us as an agency or an individual VA or an individual OBM to do their work, do it properly. So you go, you know, pull teeth or, you know, help somebody with their feet or, you know, their shoe inserts, whatever it is that you need to do. Yeah. You get them trained up, you assume properly so if everybody is on the same page that they're going to be doing their job to make you look good, and then you just go from there. But if you can, the best thing to do is hire an agency, somebody who has everybody on board. If you need infusion software, they can do it. If you need blogs written, posted, podcasts edited, they can do it. So if you can find somebody who has a great team that can pretty much service everything, I'm going to kill that cat. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't, so I'm going to have to leave it to you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, they, they do this. It's, it's embarrassing. It's almost like having two-year-old's mom. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry. And, you know, how do you tell a cat, shut up? You throw something <laughs> at it. You just throw, so, you throw something at it and it'll chase it and it'll, it'll keep it occupied for a little while. He's so, in so, you, room. so is it He's like, not even close to me. Does it like um yeah, where some people so instead of a uh, a business owner going, Okay, I have a virtual assistant here or one or two and I've got this person here and then they're trying to manage who all these people are, you're saying yeah, it's messy. sometimes you go to an agency and just say, This is all the stuff I need getting done and yes. they just pay one fee to yeah. one agency and then the agency takes care of all the other things. Exactly. Exactly. And the way my agency is set up, I have contractors. I have them all over the world. I really do. Most of them are here. In the, I like to stay in the United States and Canada. I like to stay in North America. But every once in a while, I'll find somebody in another country who is just knockout at what they do. And I'll bring them on board. But here's the thing that a lot of people don't understand about virtual assistants either. You are hiring. You're not hiring a person. You're, you're working with them. You're partnering with them because they are a contractor. They don't work for you. They may have multiple, multiple clients. So you need to understand that you're a very important client to them, but they're not just sitting there waiting on whatever it is that you're paying them. They are working all over the place and they're working hard and they're working fast and they're working smart and they're learning from other clients, you know, what to do possibly for you. I can't tell you how many times I've picked up something for 
working with a particular client that I went, okay, that's good. I'm spreading that all through my agency. That is good stuff. Yeah, and that's what you want so, though. Oh yeah, absolutely. But the thing is all of my, and I got a little bit off track, but all of my people are small business owners. And this is a very important thing to remember. Your VA is unlikely to be working just as a VA for you. So they more than likely have their own business. They may have their own web development company. They may have yeah. their own social media marketing company. They may be doing podcast editing and that's all they're doing. So chances are you are dealing with somebody who is paying their taxes, paying for their own team, they're hardworking people. And those are the people you want to find. You want to find people who are small business owners, who understand marketing and who understand how to operate a business because they're already operating theirs and they can help you operate yours. So it's not just them doing the task, it's them doing oh, the no. task and adding even more value than what you expected. So you're saying, I want you to edit this podcast, for example. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. go, okay. So they could just go edit, 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 give it back to you and, and it's done. But you want them to go, okay. And this is what I'm doing for other clients. And when it comes to marketing that podcast and getting information right. and making it better, you want them thinking you, about you. You want their buy-in. You yeah. want them to buy into what you're doing. You want them to have a big picture view of what it is that you're doing so they can show up and really help you. Okay, so if somebody wanted to get a virtual assistant, for example, say they, like they've, they've never had one, we've worked out they've got to sit down and they've got to work out all the tasks that they're actually doing and they identify it, do they go all in and try and outsource as many things as possible or you know, do they just put their foot in the water first just to see what it's like, see if they, if they like doing it that way? Um, put your foot in the water. Just put your foot in the water no. just, to, just yeah. to test it? Yeah. Well, it's the same thing as if you're hiring somebody for your brick and mortar. You know, a lot of people are hired on a contingency basis. Look, we'll try you out for 30 days. That makes sense because yeah. you don't want to bring on board an individual or a team that just kind of doesn't, you, you, either you don't understand them, they don't understand you, or their work is crap. I mean, you, you want to have that kind of contingency there, but I would just start out small. Maybe right. start out with somebody that you're going to say, okay, I've got a bunch of things that I want you to upload into Aweber or Infusionsoft or, yeah. you know, whatever your, your database is. And if they can do that and if they're competent at that, great, this is wonderful. Okay, um, let's see what you can do next. Yeah, you know, definitely don't start big. You, you will lose. It's terrifying and it's expensive and it's probably not to go, going to go well for either of you. One, th one thing I have heard people say when I've mentioned virtual assistants to them and they have a bit of a fear of, but if I want that virtual assistant to post stuff on my website and look after my website and that I can just flick the information, they can edit it and get it on my website, I have to give them access to passwords and other no, sensitive no, no. information. You give them their own, you give them their own logins. Okay. So, so the virtual assistant gets their own login, but they still have access to your website, even though you don't, you don't know them yet or, or trust mm -hmm. them. Uh, and that, that was just something that I heard from someone once going, oh, I've thought about doing it, but yeah. what if they get on there and just totally stuff my whole website up that I've put so much hard work into? Um, yeah. Would you say you're better yeah, to it get... It happens. It does happen? Oh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, okay. You, so the, if fe you the get fear hold is of real. somebody incompetent... Listen, back in the day when I first started this, people would... One of the biggest arguments i guess against hiring me would say oh i hired a i hired a virtual assistant and they just ruined everything and the biggest complaint tyson was they just disappeared because when you're trying to build a business the worst yeah. thing you can do is say, oh yeah yeah i can do that when you know darn good and well you can't do it and you're planning on learning on the customer's dime i'm uh, going to warn everybody oh, that's, don't yeah. do that it's a bad idea there's bit, yeah, but if, the thing is even not with just virtual assistants there's business oh, coaches out there oh, who yeah. uh, who yeah. have never really even had a business and all of a sudden they've going to become a business coach yeah. and they're learning how to be a business coach oh, on yeah. on somebody else's money <laughs> It's, yes, and it's particularly rampant in the VA industry. You know, this, oh, you know, it, I would go online into maybe a little group that I'm kind of lurking in to see what's going on. And say, I just took on this new client. They're breathless. I took on this new client. Okay, does anybody have a contract that I can borrow? Are you kidding me? You yeah. have not set up your own standard operating procedure. You know, your your operating procedures. You're you're not presenting as a business. So, 
but what would happen and this i don't know if it's still happening as bad but i noticed it but people would say i'm not going to hire a virtual assistant they promised they could do this that and the other and then they just disappeared they stopped answering emails they wouldn't answer their phone they just disappeared when your virtual assistant disappears that is their tacit way of saying i don't know what the hell i'm doing sorry okay. that's exactly what just happened i've seen so, that i've seen that before and it, and like i said yeah. not just business coaches but um oh, what do they call them like media companies and it might be someone who yeah they yeah. worked once at the radio station for three years and then all of a sudden yeah. they've now become a media agency and when, and when they were when they were with radio they used to say that newspaper was rubbish and tv was a waste of time and online that's just not the way to go but now that they're a media agency they're actually trying to t you know what i get scared about and this is just bugs me no end is when people get their get their their marketing education from the same people that are selling the advertising. That, I know that bugs me. I know. <laughs> I see this in VA groups all the time. Yeah, you know, these people have been a virtual assistant, probably not terribly profitable, and all of a sudden they've been a VA for about five and a half minutes, and now they're coaching other VAs, and I just yeah. want to smack them you have no idea i mean it's all i can do to just keep my mouth closed i'm like okay you get what you pay for but the thing is consistency when you're going to work with somebody whether it's in-house whether it's online consistency is one of the keys it really is so if you and your team don't have to waste time and effort reinventing the wheel each time yeah you've improved your you you have managed to improve your efficiency and you reduce your labor costs because now you've eliminated that back and forth thing, which is death to any kind of online or virtual relationship. I mean, you really have to do it. So, I mean, you wouldn't build a business without guidance systems or processes. Life is going to become really messy and really frustrating for you and the team that you're trying to build or the agency that, you know, you, you are hiring. You have to really, really, really have your needs, your wants, and your desires written down, and then you have to make sure that the person on the other end of the phone or the conference call gets it, and they're willing to prove that they get it. You know, they will say, okay, give us five hours. Yeah. We will knock it out of the park, and then we'll go, we'll go look at something else. I always tell people when they want me to work with them, I never say yes right away, never because I want to take a deep dive into their business and they will always Tyson. I don't know why they do it, but they will always give me access so I can peek under the hood, so to speak. I'll go look at their WordPress installation. I will go into Infusionsoft. I will go into a Weber or whatever it is that they're doing. And I will see where they've got gaping glaring holes in their system and their processes. And I'll make recommendations. Okay. And at that point they're taking me seriously. Right because I've taken the time to go look at their business and say, you know, this is your website's great, but man, your social media is, I don't even know why you're bothering. You need to do something completely different with that. So try to find a VA who is a small business owner who is dead serious about growing his or her own business and taking you along with them. That's the best advice I can give. So we, we, because we were talking before, um, like when I was on your podcast about the six pillars of marketing, and you were saying that a lot of your work comes through from word of mouth, yeah, you know, referrals and that type 100%. of thing. One hundred percent. So I've been one hundred percent referral based since day one. I've never paid for a lick of advertising. Yeah, and and that's where I think uh, people should, if they know other people that are using virtual assistants, is um, give feedback from them. On, on what oh, what they yes. like about the person that they're using, and Absolutely. Go, and if they're super happy and they they're giving glowing reports, then that's a good sign. If they're going, oh yeah, they're okay, but then that's yeah. usually listen, not a good listen sign. Listen to that, yeah, <laughs> right. And the thing is, and I always encourage people, listen. I've got online reviews. You know, I'm, you can't throw a stick on the internet without hitting me. But <laughs> we, hey, do you want to give your give your business a plug while while we're about halfway through? Give it a plug now the name of your business so people can find you so we don't oh. have to do it at the end. Oh, well, thank you. Um, my main website, which is being rebuilt, I feel like the carpenter, not the carpenter, the cobbler with no shoes, you, mine is old and people will say, oh, it looks great. And I look at it, no, it needs yeah. to be rebuilt. <laughs> yeah. 
but, but it's yourofficeontheweb.com. And then my podcast is yourpartnerandsuccess.com. You notice the, the word your? Because yeah. everything I do is ga- it's geared towards you, what your needs are, what my clients' needs are, what my audience needs are. But, but yeah, that's where you can find me. And of course, I'm all over social media. You are. And, okay, I've got another question for you. Do, you. do you think there's a certain time when somebody has a business that they can be using virtual assistants too early? where they need to run their own business or what, you know, for a certain period of time first, understand their business, then get a virtual assistant? Or do you think... That, no, you're right. That's a great point, and you're absolutely spot on. In the very early days, I would have people come to me because I was working, and I still do work, with one of the best-known fitness experts in the world. And he would do these gatherings, and he has grown and grown and grown. It's insane how much he has grown over the past decade or so. But he would say, okay, you need a virtual assistant. And people would come out of these these engagements with him and they would call me and say, I need a virtual assistant. And I learned very quickly to say, no, no, we need to talk first. What? Why do you think you need a virtual assistant? What do you think it is that we do? Let's look at your business. I turned away and continue to turn away more business than I actually accept because I do not want to do a crummy job for someone And if I haven't done my homework for you and you haven't done your homework so you know how to bring me into the big picture view, it's not going to work. So, yeah, I mean, that's an excellent point, and I'm so glad you brought it up. Learn your own business. Get your operating procedures in place. What it is that you need done, what it is that you don't want to do, what it is that's repetitious, what it is that you don't have the technical know-how to do. What is your growth pattern? Where are you planning on going? You know, we don't want to look at the business that you're doing right now. We want to see where you're going to go and yeah. slot into that. So, yeah, great question. The only reason I asked that was because it's like, say, with my podcast, and I I went to a podcasting conference and there was a guy there talking, uh, Omar Zenholm, and he has the $100 MBA show. So and I was talking to him and he said, even with all the success of their show, he, he said, we, him and his wife, uh, Nicole, edited the first hundred shows we did it ourselves, so that we knew exactly what we wanted and how we wanted it edited and once we were really happy with how we wanted it run then we outsourced and got somebody else to do it exactly and, and i think any business you need to understand the process before you outsource the process so you know the mm-hmm. process is being done properly and i started to say something to that effect earlier I have this great team. Some of them have been with me for a very long time. They all own their own businesses, but you know why they stay with me, Tyson? Because when I send them documents or requests, I'm so meticulous in what I'm requesting that there's no back and forth. They can take that document and run with it. I'm also in a very fortunate position because I am a techie nerd and I dream in you know html and short codes it's a sad life yeah you're the, but, ner- the nerd in still it is <laughs> i'm a nerd <laughs> I, and i didn't even know i was a nerd but here i am but i never ever ask any member of my team to do something that i can't do myself and that's how i'm able to yeah. you know, kind of spot check and say okay so i can give them really great instructions but and i learned this early on because they're all professionals, because they're small business owners, I am smart enough, I'm patting myself on the head, to go to them and say, okay, this is what I want. Do you have a better way to do it? This is the big picture view. And I keep using that term because it's important. This is the big picture view. Is the way I'm doing it okay with you? Or do you have a better suggestion? Let's chat about it. Most of the time they're fine with it, but I get some great suggestions from these people. Yeah. And I incorporate those into my standard documents. So yeah, you know, find out who's doing what, you know, wh- how you want them trained and then create that system. If you if you don't have systems, you've got a mess. Oh, true. T- I totally agree. And, and I know when I, when I had my podiatry business and there wasn't one thing in that business that I did not know how it worked right from I, I knew everybody's role i knew what everybody did exactly. I, I, could, I could i could do the reception role and i could do everything the receptionist could do i may not have been as quick because i wasn't doing it every day but by doing that too i always felt i'm not being held to ransom ransom by anybody and i've i've seen business owners that i've been talking to and they've been really unhappy with their practice manager and i go why well, don't you just get rid of them oh if we got rid of them 
it would be chaos. We have no idea how the front desk works, the booking system, how this works. And I went, well, that is crazy. I said, you, you it, need to know bad. how that works. It's just dangerous. Right. Listen, business systems are essentially your back office functions. They're not going to be visible to your clients and your customers, but they are the building blocks that create the systems that allow the business to run with or without you. You get that, I get that. So, you know, treat treat your business like a business and bring on board. You can't hire a virtual assistant. That's it's a misnomer. You are partnering with a virtual assistant, in my yeah, opinion. That's a good point, partnering. When, when yeah, but when you bring them on, you've got to have the system so they've got something to start with you've got to have the knowledge of what it is that you want them to do and then you have to really ask them to help you say okay listen this is the way i've always done it it works but if you see a better way let me know and that way they've got buy-in they're really excited about working with you because you're not treating them like a commodity at the end of the keyboard they're really literally partnering with you Okay, so we mentioned yeah, finding a virtual assistant or a, a, like a, an agency like yourself through word of mouth. If somebody didn't know, you know where to go, um, what would be the first step to, to look? What, what are they looking for? Is it like reviews and, and um, re- reviews online, some p- positive feedback from people that have used them? That's, that's certainly one place. But, you know, here we all have websites. We all have social media. If we're doing any kind of business, Again, whether it's brick and mortar, whether it's virtual, we have people that we follow, don't we, Tyson? We have yeah. marketers that we really like. Frank Kern comes to mind. We've got authors, you know, speakers. Larry Wingett comes to mind. People that we know, like, and trust. As I say at the top of my podcast, you know, we are in a know, like, and trust economy. What I would suggest is that you go online and you start following somebody, several somebodies. Make a yeah. list. Put it in a Word doc. You know, I'm, I'm following... Uh, Marie Forleo. I'm following Amy Porterfield. I'm following Tyson Franklin. Okay, I want to see how he's getting stuff done. And if you're paying attention, you will figure out very quickly that he's he or she has a heck of a team. Now you go follow whatever it is that they're doing online, and you start realizing who their team is. It's not hard to find out. Or ask them. Just say, listen, I'm thinking about hiring, or bringing on board a virtual assistant yeah. Would you would you be happy to recommend anybody? Do you know anybody? Go to someone like me. Listen, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I may be way too expensive. I may be out of your budget. I may not like you. I won't work with people I don't like. <laughs> okay, that's I a, just won't. That's, that's good. But yeah. I like what you said about yeah, you may be too expensive. Yeah, and for I may the, well be for the you know the someone who's kicking off and they're thinking about getting one. You may be way too expensive. But for a bigger yeah. company who's got great cash flow, who wants to. You know, deal with someone in the yeah, you know, like you're in America. They want to deal with someone right. who's American. They don't want to have to right. go ship off all overseas. <laughs> I know, I know that you hand on your heart, you're very patriotic. Um, and yeah. Australians, Australians, <laughs> Australians are very much like that too. So I people know. would, people like, I think, working with people in their own country, if if they have well, the opportunity. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes they go overseas because the service they're getting in their own country just isn't as good. Well, there is that, and the thing is, I mean to go back to I'm probably you know out of reach for a lot of people I I know that and I I admit it but here's the thing if you're looking for a virtual assistant or you're looking for a recommendation contact me I will be happy to help you I will be able to you know listen to you find out what it is that you need whether you just need somebody to help you with a funnel or you need someone to kind of clean up your website or if you're you know your site was affected by malicious malware oh my yeah. god what do I do I can help you. Shoot me an email. Shoot me a note on Facebook. We'll chat. I'll do my best to refer some people to you. And good luck and God bless. What I'm saying is reach out to people who do the kind of work I do. Don't let our our rates scare you. We're human. We're entrepreneurs. Call us. Yeah, but for the average business owner or entrepreneur who's yeah fairly busy, they've got you know pretty good cash flow coming through. Yeah, they're not making millions, but they're 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 making a living. They're doing well. To think about using a virtual assistant to help them with, say, maybe the you know, podcast editing, or it could be their, their online profiles. How many hours a week, on average, would you normally give to to an average, just an average entrepreneur who has got a, a uh, an average profile? That's kind of hard for me to answer because I've always had a twenty hour a month minimum period. 
Okay, well, look, there, you, there you go. That's, that's, that answers my question. So it's a 20 month yeah. minimum. For me, it's 20 hours a 20 month hours minimum. A month, yeah. If, yeah, if you're not serious about it, I can't work with you. But a lot of VAs will have what they call packages, which I never did do. I've always worked on a retainer. Uh, and there's a reason for that, Tyson. You know, the problem with a lot of new VAs is they don't have, they don't know their own value. So they're really reluctant to say, listen, I'm worth $85 an hour. It's 20 hours a month. Pay me this much on the first of the month. And, you know, I will help you build your business. But a lot of people will say, okay, you know, I put five hours in for this guy and he hasn't paid me. Two things are wrong with that. Number one, you gave your work away for free. Number two, you cannot budget on maybe I'll get paid, maybe I won't. Yeah. So you, again, treat your business like it's a grown-up business. I love your attitude towards this. I love how you said this is what my rate is per hour, minimum right. twenty hours, and it basically goes from there. So if somebody is looking at everything they're doing, they go, "Oh, I've, I've worked out. I probably need someone eight hours." Then you're not the business mm -hmm. to contact. They go and no, find somebody no. else. And, and I but think that is brilliant. Me and I'll see. I'll see if I can help you find someone because I know a lot of people in this industry. And it may be that whatever your project is, is just not for me. I don't want to take it on. I'll help you find some, I'll do my best yeah. to help you find someone. So ask around, ask around in who people who are doing this work, ask the high end VAs, ask the, the, the lower end VAs who are you know, v, maybe taking on five hours a week for clients. There's a lot of them out there. They do great work. They do. So just start asking around and get recommendations and get referrals and then you know, say, okay, you know, I'm talking with Susan tomorrow and she sounds great, but I really do want to talk with people that she's worked with. Yeah. Insist yeah. that you are able to find, you know, you really need to be able to speak to people who have worked with Susan. If she can't give you that information, go to Molly, go, go down the line. Don't hire Susan. I'm so glad we had this conversation because I said at the beginning, I've, I've never used a virtual assistant. I didn't know too much about, you know, I knew, I know what they are. And I know people have been using them, but you've really opened my mind up to looking at it from a different angle. Looking at it actually, like you said, the good virtual assistants are businesses. They're not just yes. They're not just no. some person that's hiding uh, in a hut. In um, we're not a service provider. <laughs> we are business owners. We yeah. are providing very valuable services. That, yeah, but that is good. Our advice. job is to give you everything that you need in your business, and we do this for every client we just do that's just the way we operate we have high business morals if you like we're just not going to show up and do an okay job and hope you pay us again the next month i mean yeah. our job at the end of the month is for you to go holy crap on a stick yeah. okay what's next <laughs> what are we that. doing next this was fun <laughs> holy crap on a stick <laughs> yeah it's a southern thing sorry <laughs> oh that's fantastic i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna promote just that one line there holy crap on oh, a God. stick. <laughs> um i've got one last question for you and this is this is a question that i ask all my guests and anyone who's listened to all my shows or is even knows what the question is going to be and it's it's my monday morning tip question and you're you know you've gone down to the local coffee shop and you picked up a coffee. Someone's walking past, and they said, uh, "Hey, you're the nerd that wears stilettos." I, I was, <laughs> I, I was listening to it's no secret with Doctor T, and uh, you were talking about virtual assistants. What's the number one tip you would give me when I walk into work? Yeah, you know, this morning it's Monday. I'm about to go into work. I've got my coffee. When I sit down at my desk, what's the number one tip do you think I should do today? Focus. And, and I know that sounds odd, but listen, I have learned to do a lot of work by not multitasking. And it's against the grain for practically every female I know. We just multitask. It's how we breathe. Stop doing that. Do not multitask. I do what I call segment intending. I sit down at my keyboard and depending on what work I'm doing, whether it's very technical, whether it's something that is going to have my eyes glazed over in the next 20 minutes, I will set, and I say it out loud, Tyson, I will kind of put it out to the universe. It's like I'm making a promise to myself. I would say, okay, Denise, you are going to spend the next 45 minutes working on only this new LinkedIn profile for client. Only this. You're not answering the phone. You're not looking yeah. at email. You can smack the cat if necessary, but other than that, you're going to focus on this LinkedIn profile. And you know, as I learned how to do that, as I really, really made myself focus 
I would be able to look up at, or look down rather at my system keyboard, my system tray and go oh, 44 minutes and I'm just about done because I locked everything else out. That is great advice. Oh focus yeah. it's important and you will have to train yourself it's tough yeah and i've heard i've heard that before and i've listened to podcasts where they've been talking about multitasking and they said it's really um it's virtually impossible for people to actually multitask and be efficient they reckon there's only about two or three percent of the population can actually do it the rest of us think we're multitasking and what we're really doing is just distracting ourselves from the from the job that really needs to be done so denise just one more time just tell people where they can find you again Oh, thank you, Tyson. Your office on the web dot com, your partner in success radio dot com, and my personal uh, website, which needs to be updated as well, is just my name, Denise Griffiths, and my last name. I'm convinced that my in laws made it up. It's Griffiths, G R I F F as in Frank, I T T as in Tom, S. There's I, no H. There's no I N. Know. I know. Isn't that that's a sneaky one, isn't it? I um. I'm telling you. I, I know when you when the first couple of times I actually typed it in i thought oh, hang on, i've typed the wrong thing in here and then i've gone no no that's exactly how there's two t's there where where'd the h go so so denise thank you so much for coming on to it's no secret dr t and sharing all your wisdom in this virtual uh assistant world which um sometimes seemed a little bit hazy but now my eyes have been opened so thank you for coming on my show you're so very welcome and it's my honor to be here thank you so how good was that? As I mentioned, I've had friends that have had virtual assistants, but nobody has explained it the way that Denise explained it today, that your virtual assistant is not just somebody that does a few tasks for you each week or each month, they are your partner in success. And there's a difference between a virtual assistant, an online business manager, and also your social media manager. And I didn't realize there were agencies that you can actually go to that can oversee all this for you, which is like what Denise owns. So I'll give it another plug because I think it's really important to go and check this out online. Her website is yourofficeontheweb.com. And it's really got me thinking about the tasks that I do each week. There's probably a few things that I do, even though I enjoy them, that probably should be outsourced and I should be focusing my time on more productive areas. And think about your own week. Are there things you're doing on a repetitive basis that you know you should be either outsourcing to a VA or maybe just outsourcing to somebody else in your business? Just give it some thought, note them down, and then decide what is the best thing for you and your business. So my guest next week is Daniel Geffen. Now Daniel is so switched on. He's currently based in Israel and he's written a book called the Self-Help Addict. It is a very, very cool conversation. Here's a little snippet of what's coming up next week. People who don't take action, they're just spectators of life. And, you know, that's what my book, The Self-Help Addict, is all about is do you want to be a spectator of life or do you want to play the game, right? Do you want to watch everybody else playing or do you want to play, right? You want to die you know, basically having just watched life go by, or do you want to grab life by the balls, so to speak, and make something happen? I think by the time you finish listening to Daniel next week, you're going to go, you know what? I need to grab life by the balls just a little bit more, and I do need to take more action. So if you have any thoughts after listening to this podcast or any of the other ones in the past, I'd love to hear from you. You can leave comments on my website, tysonfranklin.com. Or you can reach out to me on Facebook and LinkedIn. Just look for Tyson E. Franklin. I'm a pretty friendly person and I connect with anybody who is worthwhile connecting with. So that's it for me. Look after yourselves, look after your family, and I will talk to you again next week. Bye for now.